Hello, my name is Jay, and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about the interday management piece of our Optimizer Workforce Management product. Uh, and specifically, we're going to spend time in this video on intraday monitoring. So first of all, what is intraday monitoring? Uh, we've created this great schedule in Optimizer, and uh, we've uh, forecasted uh, lots of information that we think will take place in the contact center, and now we are live with that schedule. So we are looking at our forecasted information against what's actually happening in the contact center. Uh, we'll look at what information can I filter to uh, look at it more efficiently. I'll add some data table columns to our views, and then we'll finish up this quick video with uh, some other thoughts of why uh, working in this uh, piece of the product uh, might be important. So let's get in the product. So Optimizer Interday Management has its own pod, like many of the other features, and I'm going to go ahead and select Interday Monitoring. First reaction is it looks like a, a very large spreadsheet with information that we can filter down to a, a very granular level. So I can look at everything together in a service goal group, or I can look at individual service goal groups. In an optimizer, quite often these service goal groups are either specific work groups or groups of work groups that I want to look at. I can look at my start time and my end time. I can also look at what's happening today or look at uh, what happened yesterday if I'd like. And to make sure I have the uh, most current information, I can use the refresh button. Okay, so now in my data table I have first of all time. Then as I work left to right, I have my forecast interactions, my actual interactions, so what's really happening, and there of course is the difference. And then for interactions, I also have a, a group called actual completed interactions. If I work left to right, I have my handle time, forecast versus actual, and my difference. I have FTE, forecasted versus actual, and at the very end I added two more columns of service level, because of course service level is probably something we'd be paying attention to. If I'd like to change these columns or add information to it, I just right click and say choose columns. And I have a number of columns to choose from uh, that I can add to this view. Now I'm kind of limited on space in my view right now, so I think I'll keep it as it is. But as you see here, there's lots of different views I can add, lots of different columns I can add to the view. Uh, there's even some reforecast options here uh, that we'll talk about in a future video. At the bottom of the columns, I have some averages that I can look at. So one moment. And it sort of ties it all together for us. So there's my interactions, average versus total and the percentage change, handle time, I believe that was FTE, and then lastly over here I have my service level. I can also graph this information if I like. So if I go and let me get rid of this one first. I'll go to graph one first. Here's some graphing options I can use to uh, get a more of a visual of what might be going on. Go up to right with it. I added a graphs two column as well. I think it's the same graphs, but I can add graphs here as well. And I can have a graph three column, etc. So this is a way I can look at it in a graphing format. All right. So why might this data be important to us? Again, we've made the schedule and uh, we've created the forecast to uh, all the information that we knew at the time. And now, uh, let's say, and these numbers really aren't going to help me out with this story, but uh, let's pretend that all of a sudden I'm missing, I don't know, 15 FTE. So I'm, I need to find some agents that I've suddenly misplaced. Well, in that situation, there might have been a training or a meeting, something that's happened since I made the schedule that has uh, adversely affected uh, many things if it was that many agents, especially if I was a middle-sized center or even a small center. So I'm going to use this information to track down um, how many agents I might be missing, and then I'll start putting together some theories of maybe, again, someone's having a training or a meeting that I didn't know about at the time when I created the schedule. So this is the first stop in kind of a, uh, a line of, of um, tools I can use to hopefully track down and, again, manage my schedule in the uh, in the period of the schedule to uh, to its fullest. Uh, from there, from here in the next video I'll make, I'll look at adherence next. So I have a theory that I'm missing 15 people. 
Now let's see if I can go find where those 15 people might be. And that's where I work from. My interdata mon inter monitoring to the next piece, which would be uh, looking at my agent's adherence. So that is interdata monitoring.